the word you hear that cleanses your mind when your mind has been cleansed your life is holy if you are not taught who christ is you cannot live an effective christian life there is no other honor greater than that of sonship worldliness is the trap that enslaves men to the devil relationship with god is a gift fellowship is a choice the true expression of divine love is forgiveness to others what you pursue is an expression of what you desire then moses said thus says the lord about midnight i will go out into the midst of egypt what time so the lord says i will move at midnight all right <clears throat> So she arose at midnight and took my son from beside me while thy handmaid slept and laid it in her bosom and laid her dead child in my bosom. They exchanged children which time? Midnight. Psalms 119 verse 62. At midnight I will rise to give thanks unto thee because of thy righteous judgments. The mystery of midnight. Yeah. Well, let's put it understanding the mystery of midnight. I think that's better. Is that better? Amen. Write which one you like in your book. Is all right. <clears throat> Glory be to God. The Bible says in the book of Ecclesiastes 3, verse 1, speaking about the oppressions of God, it says, There is a time for everything. A season for every purpose, every activity that is a time. Glory be to God. The first thing I'd like you to understand is this. The manifestation of God in the realm of men is activated and sustained by times and seasons. God is mighty. God can do everything. But when it comes to God acting, when it comes to this earthly realm, the actions of God will come through time and season. You must understand this. When you don't have this understanding of God, you will constantly be a victim of wickedness of the devil. You must never forget this, that God operates in this earth realm by time and season. For, for example, <coughs> if you plant a tree, for example, you don't have to pray for the tree to bear fruit. There is a certain season allocated by God for that tree to bear fruit. You will hear those say like, this is season for mangoes. Is it true? Season for pear. Season for plum. So you see that when the season is come, the fruitfulness of every living thing is activated into oppression. So, the fruitfulness of everything God has created is unlocked into manifestation by its time and season. Ecclesiastes 3 verse 11 says, God makes everything beautiful in its season. You must understand this now. The understanding of this both helps you to be patient and to be smart. Because if you are impatient, the truth is that you have what we call immature and not properly formed breakthroughs, which will destroy you. If a child come before six months, sorry, before nine months, that's dangerous. Extremely dangerous. Are you with me? But also, if after nine months, the child delays of coming is also dangerous. So, no matter how you put it, there must be an understanding that everything that God has to do, operates with what? With time. So, the fruitfulness of every living thing is activated into manifestation by time and season. Same like you, same like me everything that God will do in our life will be a function of time and season. Now, this is very important because oh, can we read something now? Let's see Ecclesiastes chapter 9 we'll read verse 11 and um, verse 12 let's just go there first. <clears throat> I returned and saw I returned it means you went to where? He said that I checked something. I returned and saw under the sun the race is not to the swift nor the battle to the strong nor bread to the wise nor riches to men of understanding nor favor to men of skill but time and chance happen to them all 
he's saying that the man who won the race is not because he was the fastest it's because it was his time and he took advantage understand this he said the battle is not for the strong many at times you realize that there are people you feel more qualified than them occupying positions you think you should be there it's simply about time and season so the law of greatness states that unless a man takes advantage of his time and chance he will not fulfill purpose there is a time you should understand this as a child of God there is a time and when you don't have this understanding of time and season you will be manipulated out of your blessing by Satan and you will not even know there are many people who ought to have gotten married 10 years ago and they are still here saying my day go come their day has passed they don't know that's what God says I will restore the years God begins to restore the years because he knows that you have lost it already so he activates that system as a strategy to bring you back into what you lost because of ignorance or negligence of time and season. You must understand this law, time and season. Are you with me, child of God? It is a time and chance happen to them all. So it's a gift to every man. Time speaks of, you know the time? Chance means opportunity. So we understand that the opportunity into greatness is activated by the arrival of your set time. If you are praying for opportunity, watch out for time. Because it is, for example now, when a woman is praying for a child, for example, and even when she goes to the doctor, they will tell her in your ovulations, how do you call it, ovulation period, that is a door for fruitfulness. So you see, so it's not every time of a month a woman can be pregnant. There is a specific time when she can be pregnant and it is called ovulation period. It's the same thing. So there are, there, are, there are seasons in the realm of the spirit that if you are focused and you watch, you can access greatness without stress. Your time. God said to, to Sarah, I will come to you about according to the set time of life. Psalms 112, 102 verse 13 it says, Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion for the set time to favor has come. Now listen. If you read from verse 1 in that Psalms 102 it spoke of pain, trouble, tribulation. In verse 13 it says, Thou shalt arise why? And have mercy on Zion for the time to favor her. Yes, the set time has come. The word set time means a time prepared for a purpose to be fulfilled there is a difference between time and set time now is 5.30 or 6.30 but I cannot say it is set time the time is 5.30 for it to be a set time means there is something that was prepared to happen or to be done at that time so we see that there is a set time to be favored and oh my god the Bible says when Pharaoh had a dream, Pharaoh said, I saw a dream where hmm, there were seven cows. He said the first seven cows that came out were seven fat cows. Then after 17 cows came out and the 17 cows ate the seven fat cows. So much that you could not see the fat cows anymore. And Joseph said, the seven fat cow is seven years of prosperity. The 17 cow is the seven years of famine. He says seven years of prosperity will come. Whether you pray or you don't pray, it will come. Notice. He said, after the seven years of prosperity, seven years of famine will come, whether you pray or you don't pray. So, wisdom, therefore, is to have the understanding of times and season and what they demand from you. So, Joseph said, in the years of prosperity, what we should be doing is to be saving food. Because when famine will come, prayer will not help us. It is wisdom that will take us out of the predicament of this. Hear me. Some of you young people here looking at me. Be praying now. A certain age will come. You will not be able to pray. Not because you don't want to pray. Your body will not be able to carry your prayer life. Listen to me very well. The Bible says it is good for a man to bear the yoke in the days of his youth. So the youthful season of existence is allotted by God as a time to bear the yoke of destiny. There are some things if you have not done by 35, you will die poor. 
on, you will die useless unless God show you great mercy. That's what David is, uh, Moses said. Satisfy us early. So you must have this understanding. When you see people who are just playing with time, just know that these ones, they, they have no plan for their life. Because one of the signs that a man is focus of destiny is the way he's disciplined concerning time. Time. Everything you lose, you may get back. Except your time, if you're not careful. So the Bible says, redeem the time for the days are evil. So the Bible says in 1 Chronicles 12, 32, it said the sons of Issachar had the understanding of the times and seasons and what Israel ought to do. Now we are, we are moving ahead. They had what? The understanding of times and season and what Israel ought to do. For example, if you go to a, a, a nation and you are a stranger, you notice this, that people who are of that town, when a certain month comes, they say, no, it's time to go and plant corn. Then, for example, I don't know which one is which time is cocoa season. I don't know me. So if I want to engage into cocoa business, I've already I'll die poor. But some people in villages they know when to plant cocoa. So when the season comes, they know what to do. While me, it may come and I'm praying, Lord, as my cocoa, my cocoa will never flourish because I have missed the time for that. That is why. The major relevance of the prophetic anointing is that it gives men insight into the times and seasons set by God. When a prophet comes, the first thing he does is to say, hey, your time is coming up. Because we have been so carried away by the things of the world that we have stopped being sensitive and attentive to the voice of God in the spirit. So God needs to use the prophet to say, hey, your time is coming up. Prophecy is actually a one in a trumpet. The Bible says, oh my God. We say when kings went to war, David stayed in his house. The next verse says, and he saw Bathsheba. Next verse, he called for her. Next verse, he slept with her. Next verse, he killed her husband. Look at, look at where it began. When kings went to war. He said, in their time. Second Samuel 11, from verse 1 to 3. In the time when kings went to war. In the time where you ought to be praying, you are watching TV. Something will enter you through TV. Are you with me? So, when we have this understanding of time so we saw a scripture there we said god said i will move at midnight the man god said i will move at midnight i used three scriptures one for god one for satan one for man we saw that god man and satan all did something at midnight so what is there for midnight what is there to be understood god said moses at midnight, I'll be coming through Egypt. Midnight. Why not 11 o'clock? Why not 10? Why not? Why should it be midnight? Then the Bible says again that at midnight, a woman woke up, witchcraft, and exchanged children. Then the Bible says again, at midnight, shall I praise you? At midnight, Paul and Silas were praying. Why should they wait at midnight and pray? What is it with midnight? In Judges 16, verse 3, he said, and bring it up. And Samson lay the whole night. He waited. At midnight, he woke up. Look to see, read, read. What did he do? And Samson lay low till when? Till midnight. Then he arose at midnight, took hold of the doors of the gate of the city, and the two gate posts pulled them up, bar and all, put them on his shoulders, and carried them to the top of the hill that forces Hebrew. The Bible says, Thy children shall possess the gates of your enemies. There is a time for that. He said there was a specific time. Where Samson moved by the intelligence of the spirit and possessed the gate of the enemy. He says he was attacked all day. He sat quiet. He lay low till midnight. There are certain signs you see in your life in the afternoon. You, you, you are just meditating. Certain things you don't know. You are just meditating. I just 7, 8, you go and sleep. Put alarm. 11, 30, you are up. And you come and say, that accident I miss in the afternoon. You, the demon that brought it, I crush you. They thought you were forgotten. The worst thing that you can be doing at midnight is sleeping. Even married couples should avoid sex at midnight. That's no time for that. It is a time to engage the spiritual realm. To have physical results on earth. I will soon show you why.
we see that he says at mid what midnight so we understand that when god created this realm there are two seasons day and night also what is night night is the season or time that is under the dominion of darkness let's see genesis 1 2 to 5 night is the season or time that is under the dominion of darkness night is the season or time that is under the dominion of what of darkness read the earth was without form and void and what darkness was over the face of the deep and the spirit of god was hovering over the face of the water then god said let there be light and there was light mm -hmm. and god saw the light that it was good and god divided the light from the darkness go ahead god called the light day and the darkness he called night so the evening and the morning were the first day now look at this which is day light which is night darkness so night is a season a time or a place let me add place there which is under the dominion of darkness now to make you understand much more there are two kinds of nights which i must explain so you understand and we know how to pray with this understanding God has given us today. So what is night? The season, time, or place that is under the dominion of darkness. Genesis chapter 1, verse 2 to 5. I like to define things from the point of view of the Bible so you have better understanding. Two kinds of night. Number one, spiritual night. There is spiritual night and physical night. Number one is spiritual night. What is spiritual night? This is the realm of existence in the spirit which is governed by darkness. Spiritual night is the realm of existence in the spirit which is governed by what? Darkness. Let us see Ephesians chapter 5 verse 8 and Ephesians 6 verse 12. This is the realm of existence in the spirit which is governed by darkness. For you were once darkness but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Romans chapter 13, verse 11 to 12. He said, you were once darkness. Parts of them. Read. And do this, knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. Verse 12. The night is far spent. Which night is he speaking about? Spiritual night. Therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Listen to me. Do you think in heaven there is night? There is no night. Same as in hell, there is no day. So in the realm of the spirit, night and day are not seasons they are locations it is a place the realm in the, the the dimension in the spirit where there is no light where satan dwells is called night that is the that is the kingdom of satan now you have another realm which is called light in heaven there is there's no night there you think in heaven night will come people go and sleep in heaven even if they sleep not because it's night i don't know where they, if they sleep there i don't know say what i don't know but there's no night there Ephesians 6 verse 12 says that you read not against flesh and blood but against principalities, powers, rulers of darkness. Rulers of what? Now, what you need to understand is this. Everyone who is not born again dwells in the realm of darkness called spiritual night. Whether it's your husband, your child, if they are not born again, they are in spiritual night, they are in darkness. This may not look, might be kind, but it's truth. 
until you receive Jesus who is the light of life you don't you are in darkness he says you were once darkness but now have become light are you following me child of God so all those who are not born of God are in spiritual darkness uh, sorry in spiritual night that is why you have to preach the gospel to your family members because no matter how good and kind they are if Jesus does not dwell in their heart they are still in the night one of the greatest mysteries in our generation is what a man of God called Prophet Tibisha said he brought a slogan called good morning till now many Christians have not understood that dimension because it's a man who traveled in the realm of the spirit and he saw that behold for those who are in Christ there is no night so even at 12 even at 8 p.m. they say good morning for weeping may endure hey, hey. night is associated with what whether it is I don't even understand weeping may endure for the night that night is not physical night it means that as long as you are under the dominion of darkness weeping is sure weeping may endure for the night the weeping there is not 6 p.m to 8 6 a.m no that night there is spiritual darkness that as long as you are under the dominion of darkness no matter what you do weeping will endure but joy comes in the morning don't misunderstand that at 6 a.m joy has come no when you have received christ the morning has come Malachi chapter 4 verse 2 says unto those that believe in my name the son of righteousness shall arise on them so Jesus is called a son in the realm of the spirit the son s-u-n of righteousness so any time when when you receive Christ when when a, when uh, you all of you are reading Christ I hope so I hope so when earth, earth men earth men when earth men receive christ he arises on them as a son of righteousness and their morning has come day so you are kind we will endure for the night kind of three o'clock six o'clock six a.m will come whether it is 12 in the afternoon still in the night if you don't have christ let's see john chapter 8 verse 12 please let's see that i, I hope you understand what i'm saying here John 8 verse 12 Then Jesus spoke to them saying I am the light of the world He who follows me Shall not walk in darkness But have the light of life This darkness Listen to me Okay We will close church soon You will live here We will not be walking in darkness So it, it doesn't mean he's speaking of, of physical darkness there Because if you go back to your house at 9pm You are walking inside darkness what if when they have caught light you see true darkness so the darkness he speaks of there is not physical night he says he who believes in me i need you to understand this that from the day you receive christ you are entered your morning season of life and it is eternal day there is no night there is no separation because night means that light is absent in heaven there is jesus is the light that lights heaven he brings that light all the time show me job john 13 verse 30 i want to, I want to see a mystery about judas is carried having received the piece of bread he then went out immediately and it was night <laughs> listen what john is explaining is not just physical night he says when judas left the company where Jesus was present, he entered into what? Night. So every time you deny and turn your back on Jesus, you embrace darkness and become its slave. You need to understand this. There is no halfway where me and a lie and a drink, but I didn't say, I, I, no, if you have not received Jesus, you are inside darkness. And you can live according to your physical mindset a good life and end up in hell because what gives you access to heaven is not the good things you do it's the presence of Jesus Christ in your heart he's the way you like you help all orphans in the world help all people who are poor if you do not have Jesus the light of life you have no access to God who is the storehouse of life I hope you understand me 
so we see spiritual night there glory be to god now i want to make something clear so can is it possible that a christian who has received christ can begin to walk in darkness yes two things make you walk in darkness though you are in christ number one ignorance every time you are ignorant you begin to operate in the night of the spirit let's see ephesians 4 verse 18 having their understanding darkened being alienated from the life of god because of the ignorance that is in them are you seeing this now so any area of your life where you are ignorant is of under darkness can i tell you, can I tell you something here if you are sick eh, there is something you don't know if you are poor there is something you don't know remember i always tell you which you don't know senior you my people perish not for lack of power for lack of what so even for so we see that number one to be in the spiritual night is when number one you are a pagan you are a pagan this one that i have not received christ ephesians 5 8 you are a pagan all pagans are in spiritual nights no matter how nice they are even if their life looks good they have money all those things have no spiritual value at all a man's life does not consist of the abundance of the things he has this is what jesus told us number two and this for christians now is what ignorance that they are ignorant they don't know that is why the major assignment of pastors is to teach you because every time we teach you through the teaching of the gospel the light of God gives entrance into the life of men. And by that light, oh my God, in him was life. That life was the light of men. In who was life? In the words. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. In him, the word was life. That life was the light of men. So when I'm teaching about God, what enters you? Light. And remember this. Every time light comes, darkness must go. Because darkness is only a sign that light is absent in fact there is nothing like darkness darkness is what is created by the absence of light sickness is darkness poverty is darkness so the reason why we are sick we are poor we are afflicted is because there are things we do not know you shall know the truth the truth will make you free light 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 that's what i told you when the devil wants to operate in your life the first thing he does is to send who the rulers of darkness when they enter your life they keep you ignorant about what you are going through some people their own is worse they even sleep they don't remember their dream we need serious prayer eh? yes so no matter the attack they attack you, you would even know the rulers of darkness it is better to go to hospital and they see what you are sick of because either you can begin to take treatment or you can start praying but you are not feeling well they say everything is all right you are under strange witchcraft ignorance so you see the first thing that brings men in darkness is what no number one is unbelieving pagans ephesians 5 8 right number two ignorance number three that brings you under spiritual night is spiritual slumber Let's see 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 7. For those who sleep, sleep where? At night. Do you think it's speaking about physical night? Giving that people who sleep in the afternoon. For those who sleep, sleep at night. Yeah. And those who get drunk are drunk at night. Have you never seen people drinking in the afternoon? So this scripture is not about physical night. Give me Ephesians chapter 5 verse 14 also. Therefore he says awake you who sleep arise from the dead and christ will give you what if he gives you light is because by sleeping you are in darkness how do you know spiritual slumber you don't pray again you are sleeping in the spirit you have entered darkness never forget this whenever you get into a state of spiritual slumber you return into spiritual night the same place from where God saved you. You spend one week, you don't pray in 10 minutes. You are sleeping in the spirit.
listen to me I, I like to speak with myself as an example so we learn some years ago about three four years five six or seven years ago 20 2014 or so I had a vision in the vision I saw myself I was in church and I was sleeping here on this place and people were playing in the church in the church so we play so we're drinking alcohol in church so we're playing in church oh, playing doing things doing th and I was sleeping there I woke up I, said, ah. I prayed I slept again I saw the same dream I was sleeping again on the altar I saw the, and the Lord said you are sleeping in the spirit so the devil has gotten access into the church huh? I put I put one month for two months I started praying every night not physical no we understood while men slept that sleep is not only physical though. anytime you enter a state of spiritual physical slumber you give the devil permission to sow evil in your life while men slept so the devil has a time where he can act while men sleep in Easter time listen to me many of us here we are like we are in deep spiritual night we don't pray the truth is that when you live your life like that it's just a matter of time you will soon be destroyed this thing is not emotional the devil is extremely wicked no prayer no bible study it is possible for you to be in a church department and yet you are in spiritual slumber i'm telling you that I, the man of God, the prophet, I saw myself sleeping. Do you know as a wife, if you are not praying for your husband, that is the area of your life where you are in spiritual sleep. Oh. You can be awake in the area of your children and asleep in the area of your husband. You can be awake in the area of your children, your husband, and asleep in the area of your head. They'll come to your head. Anywhere you find evil gaining expression is the area where you were sleeping. That's what I'm saying. While men slept. So the devil needs you to sleep before he can walk. He came and saw only when they slept. Don't be deceived. What the devil does manifest in the day, but it was planted in the night. Nothing happens in the day, even physically. If somebody has accident in the daytime, they put it in the night. It's only manifested in the day. Number two, physical night. Now, physical night now is time. Spiritual night was what? Place. Physical night is the time of the day that is under the dominion of darkness. Let's see Genesis chapter 1 verse 14 to 16. I won't explain this so much because I believe that you should know this. Now I want you to see a mystery here. Then God said, let there be. Now stop. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 3, did God not say let there be light? That one was let there be light. This one is let there be light with S. So it's two different things. In Genesis, bring it up please. 1, 4. Is it 2 or 4? 4. Let's just see 3, 4. God saw, take on verse 3, thank you. God said, let there be light. Going on to verse 14. So we see, it's two different things he's talking about here. Who is this light? Jesus. Go to back to Genesis 1, 3. Let there be light is let there be Jesus. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. This is the word. Then God said, let there be, this light is Jesus. Day. Are you listening to me now? All right, let's go. There was light. Go to verse 14 now. Then God said, let there be light. This one is sun and moon is created. In the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night. And let them be for signs and seasons and for days and years. Verse 15 will tell you about. Then, and let them be for lights in the firmament of the heavens to give light on the earth. And it was so. Verse 16. Mm. Then God made two great lights. The greater light to rule the day and the lesser night to rule the the night, he made the stars also. So the night is ruled by who? The moon. The day is ruled by who? The sun. Glory be to God. Amen. So that's physical night. Now, physical night is a physical reflection of the properties of spiritual night and darkness. This is why demons operate in the night because it is the only time of the day that reflect the atmosphere they love. Don't forget this. 
that demons cannot operate where there is light they need darkness that's why even on our physical earth now when satan comes on earth and he wants to operate he chooses also physical night because physical night has the same properties like spiritual night and darkness so he chooses the night to operate there because it looks like you know he has the characteristics of that realm take note of that so physical night becomes conducive for evil attacks because it has the properties of spiritual night that is why demons love it so do demons walk in the day <laughs> yes but they walk more in the night in fact anything they will do in the daytime between 6 a.m and 6 p.m is a function of what they have done in the night between 6 p.m and 6 a.m that's where they walk are you following me, child of god so we now understand the night and we understand from scripture therefore that the night begins from when 6 p.m right to when 6 a.m 6 p.m to what 6 a.m so i've made us understand that what happens in the night number one is when men sleep all right first thessalonians 5 7 he says when men sleep is it true he says those who sleep sleep at night men sleep number two men cannot walk in the night it means holy spirits walk in the night john 9 4 jesus said night is coming when no man can walk which means the night season is when spirits walk because men are sleeping so number one what happens in the night season number one men sleep first Thessalonians 5 verse 7 number two men can't walk and number three spirits walk number one what happens in the night men sleep first Thessalonians 5 7 number two men can't walk John 9 walk W-O-R-K John chapter 9 verse 5 4 and number 3 spirits walk can we see Psalms 91 verse 5 to 6 and Luke 22 verse 3 I'll, I'll speak only on spirits walk because I've explained those other two before so just write them I'll explain this one later read you shall not be afraid of the terror by night hey. so there is a terror by night he said there is a terror that by night go back there please you shall not be afraid of the terror by night there is a terror in the night you see today you do this six seven o'clock no so there is a terror that will soon start walking around kumba walking around Kamba, walking around all over the world it comes only in the night see the next verse the pestilence that walks in darkness oh my god verse six nor of the pestilence that walks where in darkness now say yeah nor of the destruction that lays waste at noon day the destruction that attacked at afternoon it came in the darkness in the night no anybody has accident in the afternoon he had accident but in the night in the afternoon it only manifested are you listening to me now I'm showing you something deep now from the spirit, from the word of God. Do you know that when we gather like this in church and pray, the atmosphere is full of the power and the glory of God? Do you also know that the activities of sin are done in the night? Nightclubs, drinking. Look at listen to me. Bars are fuller in the it, um, sinners know that the time to sin is from 6 p.m. to morning am i lying so even people of the world know so imagine the kind of evil activities that happen let's forget about satan only what human beings do we should shift satan aside let's not even go to witchcraft just physically there is more evil sin being committed in the night than in the daytime why the kind of evil spirits that prompt men into that kind of darkness only operate by night so when somebody is possessed of that spirit it makes him love the night to do evil first Thessalonians 5 7 says 
they that sleep sleep at night and those who get drunk get drunk at night those who get drunk means those who get possessed get possessed at night what does it mean to be drunk to be possessed drunk means you're under the influence of alcohol and the bible tells us that in the realm of the spirit wine is spirit Ephesians chapter 5 verse 18 to 19 you see there so we therefore understand this that any person who was possessed by an evil spirit he was possessed when in the night either he came when he was sleeping or he did something though the spirit will manifest through him in the daytime those that let's see the law I saw you bring it up now he says those who sleep sleep at night and those who get drunk that is it get drunk where at night this is not physical drunkenness those who get possessed get possessed at night so what does this mean every day 6 p.m. and 6 a.m. is the hour for destiny do you know that in the economy of God even in come before morning Gosh. give me Genesis chapter 1 verse 4 you are making a mistake you say morning and evening God says evening and morning and God saw the light that it was good and God divided the light from the darkness verse 5 read God called the light day and the darkness he called night so the evening and the morning were the first day which one came first so when you wake up at 6 a.m and shine shaka baga baga you're already late i mean you are late for the day you i mean you are late shaka today's my day today you are you are you are you are 12 hours late because in the economy of god ordained by his wisdom evening come before morning so instead for God, morning is the second half of the day, not the first. And you are thinking that morning is your first. God says, no, morning is the second. Morning is the second half, first half don't pass. So those who <laughs> they have, have entered March, first half don't pass. Ah, how did March short so you already play first half? Eh? <laughs> Imagine that the first half of the match is in the night and you are sleeping. They give you like 10 go. You call 6 a.m. I see you the kickball. See, I don't score three. at 10 3. 10 3, they score me when? It's the first half. Let me keep playing. They score you. I hope you write that down. According to the economy of God and spiritual beings, evening comes before morning. Not after morning. Genesis chapter 1, verse 5. you have an understanding of night we cannot move ahead to bring to you what then is midnight so when is night 6 p.m. to what 6 a.m. so when is midnight 12 not so child of God I want to ask you even in your phone, when does the day start? Thank you. 11.59. By 12 is the next day. Which means midnight is the time of the day when the spiritual port has opened for another day. So the most spiritual time every day is midnight. Because it is when the day... Tuesday, Wednesday will be closed for Thursday to come at midnight. Which means anything that will happen on Thursday will enter through midnight on Wednesday because it is the door. Nothing can enter this building without entering through the door. And the door of every day is midnight. 11.59, Wednesday will be closed and 12, Thursday will open. And that time you were sleeping. So, Whatever Satan planned to give you on Thursday at midnight, he comes and gives it to you. And you wake up at six and say, Father, today is my day. Are you dreaming? 
you are I mean you, they, you are late in the, in the match you are late now I want you to see how practical this issue of midnight is that's not an hour to be watching television that's not the time those who have this mission you'll notice things for example if no matter what, what I'm doing maybe I'm relaxing if today is 30th and tomorrow is next month midnight is when I stand and I pray for you people I cannot be praying on the second I've missed I'll never enter so I, I wait 11.30 I stand on my watch 12 father we have entered a new month I speak over because everything which will enter in that month will come on the 12th midnight of the first day you need to know these things and when you don't arrange these things you will lose them forever Bible says seek the Lord and you will give you a blessing in the first month which means God does not bless people in August he blessed them in the first month anything you will see throughout the year is what God deposited in the first month so if you do not stand at your watch at midnight you will miss the blessing for the day switch that phone off put that TV off midnight you wake up in the name of Jesus that is when you take control of the day at midnight 6 a.m. you are late because the enemy has sown and he has gone you only wake up and see that ah, master do you not plant when did the enemy come he said why you are sleeping the enemy came that's what we call to you say how my food they make so why you were sleeping they came and put that stroke in your leg why you were sleeping we need to get this mystery so are you not seeing how important midnight like is so is that time when the day opens up a new day comes at midnight so the day is from not from 6 a.m. it's from 12 a.m. one minute to 11.59 p.m. that's how the day is but yet we don't know that so some of us now we are planning to go and sleep I wake up at 6 o'clock I say father thank you for today you are so late you are late you are late for that day things have already happened what you can do at 6 a.m. is damage control they have really done things I'm showing you something now you, you must create a system I'll show you some to keep watch at midnight now I'm going to first show you midnight in the terms of <clears throat> demonic number one why is midnight important no, what I'm saying is, is why is it important is because it's when the day opens also so number one witchcraft oppressions happen at midnight every witchcraft oppression that will happen is between 12 and 3 a.m which is what we call the third watch of the night the first watch is 6 to 9 p.m second watch is 9 p.m to 12 third watch is 12 to 3 fourth watch is 3 to 4 and that is when read the bible jesus always prayed between 12 and 6 he said he went out to pray at the third and the fourth watch read everywhere jesus's time of prayer every day was between 12 and 6 if you read the whole bible jesus rarely prayed in the daytime in fact you can't even quote up to two scriptures where he prayed in the day he's not there in the day he walks he healed the sick in the night 6 p.m he goes and sleep 12 this bible says eh, no 12 he says you wake up alone and go to the mountain but Jesus I will show you why he went there at midnight so at midnight if anytime you hear you read but you see third and fourth watch the night has four watches the first watch is 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. second watch is 9 p.m. to 12 p.m. third watch is 12 a.m. to 3 a.m. fourth watch 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. You will always read and Jesus prayed between it. Even that place where Jesus walked on water, it was whose time? It was four in the morning. He was coming back from prayer. Read it. I say at the, around the fourth watch of the night, Matthew chapter 14, verse 27. They saw him walking on the water. Jesus will go and pray, and he will come back by five o'clock. That's how he did. He will go to pray around 11, five, he comes back. Have you not read that they were going to the other side and Jesus slept in the boat? He slept. But in the night he prayed and came back. Jesus will walk. Six, no matter the crusade, six, eight, he closes. He goes straight to sleep. He will sleep well. Twelve, one, read, you always up at the third and the fourth watch. I will show you why. We said, number one, 
witchcraft operations operate in the night. Eh? Show me First Kings three twenty. And she arose at at what? At midnight and took my son from me beside me. Why thine had me slept? Why she slept? Okay. Uh, and put in her bosom and laid her dead child in her bosom. This is the story of the woman whom they exchanged her child in the night. She said, What? Well, this woman says the exchange happened at midnight. At midnight. So anytime you wake up in your life and anything is dead, they killed it at midnight. Second scripture, Matthew 13 25. While men slept, the enemy came and sought her. Which time did the enemy come? Midnight. Third scripture. Thank you. By why men slept, the enemy came and sought her and went his way. That scripture, this one will shock you. I want everybody to read Job 34 20. Please, everybody read this one. This is very, very strange. I read this one and, my, and I was afraid. Can we read? In a moment shall they die, and the people shall be troubled at. Oh, la Kalo Sigaba. And pass away. When does the angel of death move? Midnight. In the moment shall they die. In an you when the dead came, he said, At midnight will they be troubled. Why does the trouble come at midnight? Meaning, whatever will happen the next day, 6 p.m., 6 a.m., 7, 8, 9, no matter when it happens in the afternoon, it entered at midnight. He said, At midnight, in a moment shall they die, but at midnight they shall be troubled. The trouble that brought their death entered at midnight. So, midnight becomes the hour for every form of witchcraft operation. There is nothing about witchcraft that cannot be tied to midnight. Nothing at all. Is it their rituals? Is it their attacks? Is it their enchantments? Midnight. Because they understand that when you stand in the spirits and put one leg in Wednesday, another leg in Thursday, you have access over Thursday. Because midnight is that bridge between Wednesday and Thursday. Midnight is that bridge between this day and the next day. Midnight is that transition phase. And guess what? That's when men are sleeping. After this message, you must make up your mind that no matter what you do, even twice or three times a week, keep watch at midnight. You may not do it every night, but have at least, in fact, the best time to keep watch in the week. The first day of the week, midnight should be in prayer. I'm just teaching some things now. Be in prayer. Be in prayer. And when you mature, begin to create, create time. Me, if me I'm sleeping, I sleep around 3, 4, 5. If I sleep before 11, is to wake up by 11.30. Witchcraft operates in the, at midnight. I remember one time when I was much younger in the Lord. Not that I'm older now, but well, I might be... I don't know, well before. <laughs> so, I was in the room sleeping and I lay down on the bed and something happened. There was a bird beside the window of the house and the bird was making the noise like, you know, the noise that birds make. Now, when the, listen, when the bird was making that, I was sleeping. But as long as the bird did that, I felt like there was a wind, you know, like, like a wind coming on me to sleep. I was, you know, sometimes you feel like a strong breeze to sleep. I was covered with the sleep and as I came into the sleep, I saw myself in, in a forest with masquerades dancing. I struggled and got up. The sleep came again. When I wake up, I will hear the bird. And the Lord said, listen to what the bird is saying. And when I switched into the spirit, I heard the bird saying, Kevin, come. So that bird was an agent of witchcraft. He came to call for my soul. Listen to me. If you dream and you find yourself among occulting men, they summon your spirit. But when did they summon your spirit? And how did you answer the call? So my spirit was summoned from my room. They carried me from Kumba, took me to a shrine, and I stood among masquerades. And these fools wanted to kill me. If this, I swear to God, if not at the mercy of God, I will never have woken up from that sleep. Because it was for my death. I was being judged in a witchcraft coven. Witches came from everywhere, and everyone was giving judgment. And I said, Lord, save me. So, what do we see there? Witchcraft oppressed when at night. Number two. The angel of judgment and death 
operates at midnight. I want you to take note of this thing I've told you. The angel of what? Judgment and death operates at midnight. Give me Exodus 11 verse 4, 12 verse 12, and Exodus 11 verse 4, Exodus 12 verse 12, and verse 29. And Moses said, Thus said the Lord, About midnight will I go into the midst of Egypt. For judgment. Exodus 12 verse 12 now. Alright, can you read that? I will pass through the land of Egypt this night. I will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods, all the gods of Egypt. Please, who are the gods of Egypt? These are not human beings, they are demons. God says, I will strike man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. Please, who are the gods of Egypt? Do you know how many gods are in your village? You are joking. People are tying your family and you are sleeping. You think you wake up at 6 a.m. and, and anoint yourself. That's all. Hmm. Wake up from sleep, my friend. You are dreaming. The gods of Egypt. God, she lost verse 29. God says, I will execute judgment on them at midnight. Read. And it came to pass that at which time? The Lord smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt from the firstborn of Pharaoh that sat on his throne unto the firstborn of the captive that was in the dungeon and all the firstborn of cattle. Have you seen that? At which time? So I will show you soon that the greatest time to activate judgment on the head of the wicked is praying at midnight. There are, I will show you so there are some battles you can't be free from if you don't pray at midnight. Number three, midnight is the time of the visitation of the Lord Jesus. Let's see Matthew 25 and verse 6. I think we all know the parable of the ten virgins, right? When, at which time did the bridegroom come? <laughs> Thank you, now you know. At midnight. Read. And at midnight, there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. At which time? Now, I want to prove to you that the Lord comes at midnight. That if you want to see Jesus, even by vision, this is the easiest time to see him. Do you know that God visits his creation every morning? Do you know that? Show me Psalms 8, verse 4. What is man that thou, I don't, in the book of, I think Job, Job said, you visit him every morning. I don't know, get me that scripture, book of Job, say visit him every morning. Let's see Luke chapter 12, verse 37 and 38. I'm trying to prove to you that the Lord visits during that time. Read, blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he comes, shall find watching. Verily I say to you that he shall give himself and make them to sit down to meet and he will come forth and serve them. When the Lord shall come, no so. When will he come? Verse 38. Read. And if he shall come, when? In the second watch or come in the third watch. Stop. When is the second watch? 9 p.m. to 12. Ah, I never talk. I don't teach an answer. First watch is 6 to 9 p.m. He says, if he shall come, in the second or the third wash so the hour of visitation is between 9 p.m. and 3 a.m. where you can have a strong encounter with the Lord Jesus very powerful one strong encounter which is real and now give me job 714 God visits every man every day but most of you comes we are sleeping 18 thank you 18 that you should visit him when? No, leave. God visits you when? When does morning start? 12. Bible tells you. Have you read that? It means yesterday God visited you but you were sleeping. God came. God visited you. God looked at you. God 
just God just touched you and went. But imagine God came and you were like this. You may not see him. Just put his hand on your head, release a grace and go. So people, when God comes to visit them, <laughs> the angel comes and say, the angel will just come. You know, you are in deep sleep. Angel will just touch you. Just wake up. See, the way they run go peace. Not that you sleep with your father. That's what they run. And when a God woke up, you may pray. Or just woke up and tell. The peace you, they, they don't even open their eye because they want to meet this. That's what sleep is sweet. They want to meet a sleep cut. Try it. Once I want to tell you, never tire and allow you like sleep. A little sleep, a little slumber. So shall that poverty come as an armed robber. Look at this. So, when the hour of visitation comes, sometimes God, have you never slept and you felt a touch? You never happened for you. You felt like somebody touched you. You wake up. One time you run up, peace, come back. In fact, sometimes you wake up, that's when you are fighting blanket with your sister. You take up blanket and you drag him back. Wake up and pray. No, if you pray before sleep, it's all right. But not to sleep like that. That's an attack. Sleep from 7 p.m. to 6. Ah, it's an attack. Listen, you must not pray for two hours. Even if it's 15 minutes, keep watch in the night. When you wake up to your urinate, never sleep without praying. Even five minutes. If you don't say, thank you, Lord, for your mercy. No. <laughs> Only one go sleep. you now so tomorrow morning god god is coming around which time between 12 and 3 hope you know that is <laughs> sleep on two speed come on around. That's the problem. i shall wait on the lord he said that the master will come in the second or the third watch when he comes, you are worthy, Lord. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy, Lord. Worthy to be praised. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy, Lord. Worthy to be praised. You are mighty, Lord. You are mighty Lord. You are mighty Lord. Shagaba. Mighty to be praised. And you are mighty Lord. You are mighty Lord. You are mighty Lord. You are mighty to be praised. So Lord Jesus. You are worthy to be praised. Amen. Lord Jesus. You are worthy to be praised. Amen. Alpha and Omega. You are worthy to be praised. Amen. The King of glory. You are worthy to be praised. Amen. Patient of days. I shall wait for you. Adam knew the time that God came. I want you to know this today. Multiple visions I've had from the Lord is between 12 and 4. Listen to me. I speak by the privilege of grace as a prophet. By God's grace, I've visited heaven. I've seen spiritual words. I've seen the Lord Jesus. So if I'm talking to you about visitation, no fight me. Now my own place, now I get power. Don't fight me there. It's my own. That's an area where my grace and the gifting of God is strong. When it comes to vision, 
I have seen angels, angel Gabriel, angel Michael. I've seen the Lord Jesus. I've seen, I've seen mysteries that I don't even have words to tell you people. I said the time day between 12 and 4. I'm telling you, listen to what I'm saying. So, what should be you be doing at midnight? There are only two things to be done at midnight, and sleeping is not part of them. Number one. At midnight, don't be sleeping. <laughs> don't be in a state of sleep and slumber. I refuse. Matthew 13, 25. While man sleeps. Don't be in that state. Now, both physically and spiritually, you can be up at midnight watching TV. That is spiritual slumber. If you are watching a movie here, pause it at 11 o'clock. Pray first. When midnight comes, Anything that is not a, stop it first. Pause anything. Put off your WhatsApp phone. When 11:30 is put everything first. Enter the or put, enter that gate with God. Don't forget that He comes to visit you. So number one, don't be in a state of spiritual or physical slumber. Don't be sleeping at midnight. So if I should not be sleeping, what should I be doing? Two things. Number two, prayer. Show me Acts chapter 16 and verse 25. Somebody say prayer. And I'm going to show you the kind of prayers you engage in. In that time of midnight. But at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying. Have you seen that? Somebody say prayer. Listen to me. When it comes to this time, midnight is when you engage in warfare prayers. Number one kind of prayers is what? Warfare. Judges 16 verse 3. He said at midnight, he said Samson lay low to midnight. At midnight he went and possessed the gates of his enemy. So the first kind of prayer you pray at midnight is what? Warfare. You attack evil spirits at midnight because that is when they come and attack them. Warfare prayers. Warfare prayers. Do you know why a person number one, you should not be sleeping? It's because the Bible says uh, if the master of the house had known at which hour the thief will come, Wait, show me Matthew 23, 39. Let me, let me, before I go to prayer, I want you to understand something why you should not be sleeping at that hour. Maybe you are not getting this thing there. Matthew 23, 39. I said, number one, or in bracket, keep watch. Is it better? Keep watch. In bracket, keep watch. First thing to do at midnight, keep watch. So that, let's move that sleep and slumber. If the frightened one, keep watch is better. Let's see Matthew 23, 39. 24 43. But know this that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief will come, he would have washed and not allow his house to be broken into. So, but we have explained at which hour does the thief come? Midnight. So, number one, what should we do at midnight? Keeping watch. This means that even if you are not praying now, just be walking around your house, speaking over your children. Yes, put off your phone, just walk around your compound. You begin to catch physical things. Those evil birds, evil rats, just move around. <laughs> One time I was in church. And I was standing outside there. Around 8 o'clock. That time I was sleeping in church actually. Around 8, 9, I saw a bird in the spirit. And the bird was moving. Guess what? I began to follow the bird from church. Home. Guess what? The bird went. In the spirit though, not physical. In the spirit, I followed the bird from church. I was checking, looking at the bird. As I was inside the bird, they go. It was going to my house. I said this before God. Wait, that's my wife, witness. The bed went straight over my compound. So I entered the house at 11. Hey, my, my wife said, hey, you don't come. I said, no, it's okay. We're in the room. Before God, 12 o'clock, I was praying. I was just, I was not me, but I was just moving, speaking in the name of Jesus, Lord. We had, I mean, a big bird came to the window of our room. Passed over the fence. It was at the window. When I, then I, I don't I thought I said in the name of Jesus Christ, I, it fell down physically, not just, bam. And the Lord said, This bird came for your daughter. 
I'm, th I'm okay. Thank you, thank you, ma. If no, why at that time our daughter began crying. That's what happened. When she began crying, is when I turned and was saying, "What's wrong?" I was just saying, "Father, in the name of Jesus Christ." Ah, uh -uh. we just say, "Bam!" I turned and saw big, big eyes. It just fell. As I turned to the bed, I said, "Fire!" It fell like this. I mean, it fell. I opened the door when I said it was shaking like that, trying to fly back. Hmm. Life is spiritual. Keep watch. You don't keep watch being on TV. You don't keep watch being on WhatsApp. You don't keep watch. No. When, no matter what you are doing, 11 switch it off. Just begin to walk around. Something will drop out of your life. You will have a prophetic word for yourself. Just be walking around. Bada Kiska, Mandala Kabaya, Zishko Bada, Rikaba. He said, if the master of the house knew at what time the thief would come, they would not have broken. So they broke into his house because the thief came when he was sleeping. So you keep watch. Just take your phone, play a worship song. Just sit you down. After 12 midnight, sleep. But let 12 meet you in that place. Just play. Or put TV. Put a worship music. Put a, a gospel channel. Put anything. But be in, to keep watching is not praying. But be in the spirit. Which means you are focused spiritually. That's when you are just, you know, that's when you are talking inside your heart. I don't know how can explain this thing. Like just walking around and like a shikata. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You will pick something in your compound. I'm telling you, you will catch something which has been happy you have never known. If you are keeping watch, one day you will enter your child's room in the night. You will see her sleeping and with the position of a, of, a dog, of a dog. I prayed for one woman. And I told her, I said, I said, no, no woman, sorry. This one, I'm not going to present A pastor. I told him, I said, when you are sleeping in the night, this is what you will do. Between 11 o'clock, leave the bed. At 12, come back and watch your wife. This is a man of God. Uh, for three nights straight, at every night, you meet the wife like this, both hands like this. Then in a sleep, she'll be doing like this, sleeping. He told her he refused. He video it. She was possessed with a supper. And I kept telling her they were refusing that they cannot be possessed as a video it. Because every midnight, the spirit in her will begin to want to operate. The guy video should be like this. I mean, even your children enter their room at 11:30. Off light, sit down. Let them know. No, you will see what your child will be saying in the night when he has gone to a meeting. You will be shocked. You will catch them. You will catch them. If they are going for any meeting, they go by 11. So 11:30, sit in their room, off the light, and just sit down. They don't make any noise. 12 and 12:30, you will hear what your child will begin to say. I've done this kind of things. Listen to me, as a prophet. This is my area of speciality. I've done this kind of deliverance for many people. One, the child at 12 midnight began calling certain names, I don't want to call it, certain names of demons at 12 midnight. Which he talks so, no, I don't know. He's possessed. But no matter the spirit hide in the day, in the night, it will show. Read this story of the beginning sleep, who can go outside. Now lie, now spirit. No man is sleep, go. There's a spirit in them. Oh, la gabadisha. Listen to me. Christians went to camp meeting. Camp meeting, Christian. Choir member woke up at night, so woke up. Woke up, he's asleep. What can so? Open door. She door outside. Talking where the one are. It is sleep. I'm telling you, I don't know if you know. They woke up. Uh, say, hey, what were you doing? So I don't know. Mala shigara had it. Wicked demons. Many people are possessed, they don't even know. But in the night, keep watch, you will see it. If you yourself, you will record what you see in the night, you'll be, you'll be afraid of yourself. Keep watch. Keep watch. from now if you keep watch you will catch it anything hidden in your house if you keep watch and say choir member woke up i'm not telling you i'm not, I say, I'm not telling you about female <laughs> woke up when open the door when i sat down outside 
Sometimes she wake up, take mirror, arrange her face, do makeup, eh? answer phone call. We saw a young man, he wake up in the night and go to the stream. The guy said, Pastor, he, he woke up at night, go for stream. He woke up, went for stream, you know, now he come for here. He woke up, walk out there. Until we follow you for night, you woke up the thing. Start going. Brother, what are you going to? In a, in a sleep, baby, what can you go? What kind of witch we keep watching the night? Listen to me. Anything happening in your house, if you keep watch, I'm telling you, you will see it. You will see it. You will see it. Keep watch, my friend. Keep watch. Keep watching your life. He said, if the master of the house had known at which hour the thief came, Monda Kasi Gaba, his house will not be broken. Your husband will not become this kind of man today. But every night you were sleeping. This your son that was so intelligent. How come he's not failing exam? You did not keep watch. You don't know when they came and took your son and exchanged him. The woman said, I was sleeping. I woke up, I saw a dead child before me. Mom, who, who, who exchanged the liver of your child? Who exchanged their kidney? Devils. Keep watch. Keep watch. Keep watch. You need to learn how to move in secret. Don't tell nobody in your house. Just catch them. Just say seven days. Eleven o'clock. Then insist. Me all man go sleep. Current for prayer. Say sleep. Still let them sleep. You remain. Put off light. Eleven. Wake up. You will catch it. Remember the prophetic word they gave a woman was always sick. They said twelve go and check. Eleven o'clock. Off your light. Wait in the palo. Eleven o'clock. She off light. Wait in the palo. Twelve midnight. Saw her house help. Removing fridge open pot of her food peace inside the next day warm the food all money chop them keep watch oh how's that now you you small you small sister at picking where they stay for the house to do that kind of thing she came from the village with witchcraft stayed in their house everybody was getting sick a word came when you go back tonight everybody should leave at 10 11 go and hide in the palo and see has it came out at 12 exact remove pot who speak peace inside speak inside morning time turn them hot people and talk and devil then that's it we get people but their strength is our laziness keep watch you should not be on phone at that time they are transacting your spirit your life you can't be on phone you see at midnight the woman say, while I was sleeping, they exchanged my child. So what gave that witch the audacity to exchange the woman's child is because the mother was sleeping. So if they exchange your child as a mother, it means you were sleeping. Not because the witch was strong, it's because you were asleep. So you say, no, 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 no. My life can't be going down, I'm sleeping. Ah, business, they go down. All things, they go down. It is well. It is not well. Open your eyes. Satan is attacking. Keep watch. Look at your age. Nothing is working in your life. Despite the prayers of the man of God. Don't you see something is happening you are not seeing. Keep watch. This is how I, I captured a serpent in my house. I captured him at 1 a.m. in the night. Just move it. That's when he comes and go back. There used to be some strange rats making noise in my house. Strange rats. One day I was praying around 11 to 12. This is a true story. As I used to pray in darkness, one of the rats touched my leg. I said it before God. He touched my leg and died. Can that be a natural rat? And when he died, I slept in my dream. A woman come and told me, I said, why are you the king my picking them? You, you, this is Prophet Kevin, you know. Nadi here from my house. No, me say last year. So if you don't keep watch, this, I'm not making fun here. This is serious matter. They are eating our lives and we don't know. You wake up and say, it is where? It is not where. They just came and ate your child's liver in the night. Chop and go. The woman woke up. It's not that big. Ah, this is not my child now. This is not my marriage. This day, they don't change and see for night. So number two, what do you do in the night? Someone say prayer. prayer. Acts 16, 25. It says, midnight you do what? You pray. Can somebody pray? So midnight at Acts 16 25, he said, At midnight, Paul and Silas they prayed. Kola Kabada. Somebody had prayer. prayer. I can't hear your voice. Prayer. I'm not hearing your voice. Shatakura yeah. Siga. You pray. At midnight they prayed. 
Yeah. Show me Luke 2 verse 8. He said, and the shepherds were keeping watch over their flock in the night. Who were? Do you know why? Because many animals were praised, hunting the, hunters hunting the night. Do you know that? That predator animals come by the night. Watch that scripture, please. Now they were in the same country, shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Every good pastor in the night is praying for his people. Don't sleep, he's praying. You see me, me, I wake up every day around 10 to 11. I wake up, I wake up at 10, 11. Sometimes I sleep at 5. Yesterday I slept at 5 o'clock. See yeah. <laughs> We didn't know these things before. You want church growth. Don't pray for what you cannot carry. This church has many people. More than 2,000 people. There's no way to sleep again. I've, I've, I've lost the privilege of sleep. How will you sleep? How will you sleep now? Look at all of you people. How will I sleep? With the wickedness that is moving to and fro. And God needs me as your shepherd to be watching. <laughs> but as a mother, you're also a shepherd. You pray for your children at midnight. The devil, you can't touch my children. Raki Noska, pray. And I said, midnight is the hour where you engage what kind of prayers. Warfare prayer. You don't pray, Jesus, I love you at midnight. No. Every power fighting my life, fall down and die. Attack them at midnight. You, 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 the easiest time to catch a thief is when he came to steal. Attack them at midnight. If the angel of judgment moves at midnight, it means if you pray at midnight, you send it. When Paul and Silas prayed at midnight, that says there was an earthquake. Their chains were broken. Prison doors were open. So the greatest time to pray prayers for deliverance is which time? Show me any person who has spiritual husband, spiritual wife. That demon can stay because in the night they are sleeping. Take only 21 days, 11 to 1 a.m. for night. No devil no will sleep with you again. Fire them. That's when you, 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 you scatter marine kingdom. That's when witches have meeting. Demons have meeting, so you fire them. Every, you see tonight, their meeting must be between 11 and 2. So if at 12 I'm praying, they cannot have meeting. If they wanted to have meeting to talk about me, their meeting has already spoiled. I scatter them before they come. No, that people have meeting, come and press you. You can say, anywhere they gather. They have gathered, came and press you. Come back, they are resting. Say, anywhere they gather, let them scatter. Meeting not finished since. You are late. Prayer. Judges 16 verse 3. He said, and Samson. Someone say, warfare prayer. Any power fighting my prosperity, scatter every witch after my life, die as you are flying, fall down and die. Listen, when you are praying, be violent. Don't be, don't be muke muke. Be violent. I cut your head. I cut your hand. Disappear. Be quenched by fire. Any evil tree, any evil calabash. Well, oh, hey, mama, we don't pray prayer. Hey, yeah, yeah. Hey, hey. Ah. That's my wife. When I remove my shoe, <laughs> me, I don't pray with my shoe. No, no, no. Me and girl, we need to make contact. We, we will make contact because you are the one of, you are, you must fight. I start moving. Shaka, badaka, matika. Every evil bird, evil serpent, handle them, handle them. Strange diseases, fight them at midnight. You wake up, that left your body. And, I mean, all this sickness that is your, pray in the night for 21 days, you wake up in the morning, you will not see it again. Fight it. Evil deposit in the night. Catch them. They will all leave your body. He said at midnight. Bring it up again, Judges 16 3. Samson lay low till midnight. And Samson lay low till midnight. Then he arose at midnight. Took hold of the doors of the gate of the city. Which time? Midnight. It means uh, between 6 and midnight. It don't remain here. He plan as I told you, prepare your prayer points. Don't come and see me and say, Okay, Father, it's time to pray. My father, my father, do it for me. You, you, you are not prepared. You're going for war. You come and say, There's no do it for me in war. Between six and midnight, gather your weapon, gather scripture. Isaiah 54 17, Isaiah 49 26. Gather them when midnight comes. You say, Aha, time don't reach. 
If you have anything you want to pray about, write me. I will give you seven scriptures, seven prayer points. You keep them. Midnight, you start. My father, my father. The power in my mother's family that is withholding marriage, I break you. You fire scripture, fire spiritual arrows. Use the sword of fire, cut them, uproot them. Midnight, pray. And the third thing to do at midnight is praise. The highest time to praise God is at midnight. Show, show me one, Psalm 119 verse 62. At midnight, I will do what? I will rise to give thanks to you because of your righteous judgment. I will rise to do what? Because of what? <laughs> so even the kind of praise at midnight is a warfare praise. He said, oh, yeah, yeah, Carlos Kibara. He said, at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and praising. You see the two laws? You pray and you praise. Midnight is a time for radical, radical, violent praise. Manda Kabadagasha. Psalm 32 7 says he surrounds me with songs of deliverance. Only Jesus can save. <laughs> Hallelujah. Only Jesus can save. Amen. Amen. Only Jesus can heal. Hallelujah. Only Jesus can heal. Amen. Amen. Only Jesus can save. Hallelujah. Only Jesus can save. Only Jesus can save. Hallelujah. Only Jesus can save. Amen. Amen. This is midnight. So we wake up at 11 35. We start. Only Jesus can heal. You carry that medical report. Hallelujah. Only Jesus can heal. Amen. Amen. Only Jesus can save. Hallelujah, only Jesus can save. Amen, amen. Only Jesus can heal. Hallelujah, only Jesus can heal. Amen, amen. And you are moving your house and you are talking, praising God in because He's a mighty man of war. You've been faithful, Lord. From the ages past, Makaba, that is why your name is forevermore. You be faithful, love. From the ages past, that is why your name. There is power mighty in the blood. There is power mighty. Lord, touch my family in the blood of Jesus Christ. Shina Makataya. There is power mighty in the blood. And now I tell them I'm a basio. And now I tell you, Jehovah, I'm I'm in my room, Shaki Kabakada. And you are walking in your room and you are crying to God. You are the God I know. You are the God of deliverance. You are the God that showed mercy. Answer your name, Jehovah. Answer your name. Jehovah, answer your name. Shaka baga baga, answer your name. Jehovah, answer your name. Answer your name, oh. Answer your name. Jehovah, answer your name. And we say, Jesus. Baba, come and defend your name, O oh Lord. Kaba Kadunda. Jesus, come and defend your name, O 
your name, O Lord. Let my enemies do not laugh. Asking where is the God I'm serving. Let my enemies do not laugh. Asking where is the God I'm serving. I have confidence in you. Hey, you will never let me fall. I have confidence in you. You answer when I call. I have confidence. Shake a bone down. Any day. Any day. I have confidence in you. I have confidence in you. Jehovah. Turn your midnight into praise and prayer. I will not be sleeping when the devil is walking. Listen. Listen to me. So, in that hour of midnight, he said praise becomes a weapon for warfare. It becomes what? A weapon for warfare. Listen to me. This kind of praise, eh? let me give you a mystery. Anything which is fighting you, drag it to praise God that time. Carry your medical report. Say you must praise God with me. Take your child's picture. Put the picture of a down soul. Zakamanda Kaba. You must praise God with me. And you begin to move around as you are dancing. Carry the picture and be dancing. You carry the medical report and you are dancing. You buy a dress for a baby though you don't have a child. You carry the dress and you are dancing. Sell us the prayer and the praise God. So midnight becomes an hour of heart of warfare praise. Let the living praise the Lord. Let the living praise the Lord. Let the living praise the Lord. The living praise the Lord. Let the living praise the Lord. The living praise the Lord. Let 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 the living praise the Lord. The living praise the Lord. Let the living worship the Lord. Let the living worship the Lord. Let the living praise the Lord. The living praise the Lord. 